Isn't that fascinating that whenever we go to YouTube, we ever look at crypto content, all we see is moon boys. All we see is people that support the various cryptocurrencies, be it small, be it big. But usually the message is clear. Usually the message is that we are going to the moon, that we are going 10x from here, 100x from here. And no matter what people talk about, be it Bitcoin, be it a small micro cap, it's always positive. Why is that actually? I think there's several very interesting reasons for this. The first might simply be selection bias. So if you open up a newspaper, if you open up a magazine and you just look at whatever the news of the days are, it's very likely that you're going to stick with the articles that confirm already what you believe in. In other words, you're selecting for the information that you already feel confirms your theory around the world. So it's actually rather uncommon to actively seek out the hard content, the content that is against your current beliefs. This might be not just in the investment world, this can also be, for example, in the political realm, right? If you're, say, very conservative, you're unlikely going to follow very liberal news outlets. So simply because of that, whatever you get surfed currently in YouTube might simply just confirm what you believe in. In other words, you're clicking actively on the video that already confirms your current beliefs and your current beliefs are probably the crypto is going up, right? That's in the end why you research crypto. You want to make money. You want to believe that whatever you're currently buying is going to continue to rise. And because of that, you're already exposed to the videos that seem to be only very bullish, very moon boy kind of like videos. Now, let's say you get beyond this threshold. Let's say you actually do want to have somewhat of an objective view of the overall situation and you actively click on a video that does not confirm your current beliefs about a cryptocurrency or about anything for that matter. Let's say you click on that video. How likely are you going to positively engage with that video? In other words, how likely are you going to give this a thumbs up? How likely are you going to subscribe? How likely are you going to watch the video for a prolonged period of time? It takes much more brain power to process something that's against what you currently believe in versus the things that already confirm what you think anyways. So what that means is it's rather unlikely that you give all these positive interactions with the video. And what that then means in turn is that in the future, even though you click now on this, say, bearish video on Bitcoin, even though you clicked on it, it's unlikely that you're going to see similar videos again recommended by the algorithm, simply because you are less likely to give this a thumbs up. You are less likely to support the creator. And thus, the creator doesn't get the exposure and you specifically will not get that exposure. So what we have here is a loop that's reinforcing itself. You're only actively watching, you're only actively liking the content that you already believe in and thus you stay in your echo chamber, right? This is a very common phrase to use in social media, the echo chamber. Now, usually it's not that much of a deal. If you just follow, say, the political news, it's not that much of a deal. But if you are in investing and you want to be contrarian, especially where we're currently very high on crypto prices, and you want to be exposed to the critical views, you want to be exposed to the people that say, maybe it makes sense to take some profit, it's unlikely that you're going to see that video. It's unlikely that even if you do watch the video, that you're going to take those arguments very seriously, simply because your selection bias says nine people are bullish, one person is bearish. Unfortunately, that one person that is bearish that you maybe only have watched for half of the video length, that's the one that might be correct because in the end, that's how the market works, right? Only a minority of people make money. Only a minority of people actually sell the top. A lot of people can buy bottoms, but very few people can actually realize those paper gains early enough and can exit the market early enough. That's why we've got this positive bias. This video is sponsored by the premium membership. I never take any money from any crypto project. I never take any affiliate links from centralized exchanges. I never pump and dump coins. Instead, I offer valuable tutorials in the premium membership. Feel free to check it out. Now, there is this reinforcing loop, right? You've got your confirmation bias and YouTube with the algorithm even reinforces this. But on top of those two effects, what we also have is that the creators in the end will become more bullish on anything they say. 
And that's again because of the algorithm. So the algorithm will reward you for talking positively about a crypto project. So if I'm bullish on a crypto project, I have no problem at all talking about it on YouTube and saying, hey, this price will go to the moon. But when I'm bearish about a crypto project, I have to be somewhat careful of how I phrase things. Because once I'm just slightly bearish, once I'm just trying to be neutral on something, then I very often get negative feedback in the comments. As in people say, this is all fat, or it will recover soon, or have fun staying poor, or whatever those kind of comments are, right? They of course shouldn't be taken too seriously, but still it's not nice to read. And so simply because of that, when you're bearish on something, you don't just trash the token, you don't just trash the investment in the video, you obviously want to also convince the people that are currently bullish. And so you have to be very careful on how to phrase things. You have to say, if I was in your shoes and I made a lot of money with this, maybe I want to rebalance my portfolio a bit because maybe risk to reward isn't that great anymore. You have to be very much neutral in your language. You can't just say this is a pump and dump and now we have pumped and now I see all the whales selling. So better get out, otherwise you get wrecked. If you say it this directly, then you will simply just get a lot of thumbs down and then simply people will not accept the message whatsoever. You will not be successful at convincing anybody. And at the same time, the YouTube algorithm will also not like you for that either. So the way to express positivity is way easier compared to expressing negativity. And so this is why it all appears so positive on YouTube. Everybody's always bullish on crypto. The YouTube algorithm reinforces your confirmation bias and then because of that, the creators also rather keep quiet when they are not that bullish on something. On top of that, there are also, of course, a lot of other effects like conflicts of interest, etc. Right? Some YouTubers might simply just push up a token because they get some marketing dollars by the project. Or they might be pushing up a token because they bought it themselves. They want the price to go up and they want to then dump on their audience. There are, of course, those kinds of effects as well. But they might actually not be the main effect especially for the larger tokens, right? We are talking about Bitcoin, then pump and dumping doesn't really make that much sense. A single influencer doesn't have that much impact on the price. So what do we learn from this? What we learn from this is that we have to be actively seeking out information that's against our current beliefs. And when we see this, we have to put in the effort to actually try to understand those arguments and to maybe potentially find counter arguments. If you don't have strong counter arguments against somebody that's completely against what you currently believe in, then maybe they might have a point. And very often, you don't need the majority of people to agree with you, especially in a bull market. You want to listen to the very early voices. You want to listen to the people that take profit early. Let's say maybe right now things are a bit heated. And then you want to take this seriously. You don't want to wait until the masses also agree with this because at that point, prices will have already crashed. So if it's your first time here, feel free to subscribe. I publish videos regularly. A like would be very much appreciated as well. Feel free to also join our Telegram channel. The link is down below. See you next time. Cheers.